Good evening and welcome to another video. Today is Saturday the 17th of September 2016 and in tonight's video I'm going to look ahead and preview day number 3 of the PDC Happy Bet European Darts Grand Prix which is going to take place on Sunday the 18th of September. On day 3 in the afternoon session we will see the last 16 take place. We see 12 CD players through this stage and 4 uncd players through this stage. And the eight matches are going to start at 12 noon and run through to 4 p.m. UK time. The first match that's going to take place sees the world number one and the number one seed, Michael Van Gerwen, take on the number 16 seed, Steve Beaton. Now, Michael Van Gerwen won his match earlier on tonight against Darren Webster by six legs to four. With 104.04 average, he got a flying start in this match and eased off as the match went on, but he made sure he stepped up his game in the latter part when he needed to. When Darren Webster put that comeback in, he stayed strong and he focused when he had to focus and he got 6-4-1 in this match. The strangest part of this match took place before the match started, what was Michael Van Gerwen's entrance all about? Answers in a postcard if you know what the entrance was all about. PDC Europe liked to do things a little bit differently, but this was well out of the box, even for them. If you know what they were doing, you could leave a comment in the comment section below explaining that, because I have no clue. Steve Beaton won his match against Alan Taborn by six legs to three, with a 91.34 average. It was a solid performance by Steve Beaton, and he knows he'll have to up his game a couple of levels if he's can beat with Mike. Michael Van Gerwen in his last 16 match. So what do I think is going to happen in this match? I think that Michael Van Gerwen will dominate this match against Steve Beaton. Both like each other's style of play, they both like to get on with the game and I think that Michael Van Gerwen will win this match by 6 legs to 2 over Steve Beaton. The second match of the afternoon sees number 8 seed Mensor Sujevic take on the number 9 seed Gerwin Price. Now Mensor Sujevic continues his very very good form on the European Tour in September. He beat Mick McGowan by 6 legs to 2 with 108.45 average. It was a good match and it was a great performance by Mensor Sujevic. He stepped up in that middle of the match and Mick McGowan just couldn't live with Mensor Sujevic's performance. Moving on to Gerwin Price. Gerwin Price beat the home favourite Max Hot by six legs to three with a 93.3 average. It was a decent performance by Gerwin Price but the way Mensor Sujevic is playing just now, Gerwin will have to up his game a couple of levels if he's to compete with Mensor Sujevic. Now what do I think is going to happen in this match? I think that Mensor Sujevic will be too strong for Gerwin Price in this match. I think Mensor Sujevic will win this match by six legs to four over Gerwin Price. The third match that afternoon sees number five seed Michael Smith take on the number 12 Steve, Stephen Bunton. Now Michael Smith beat Tony West by six legs to three with a 91.99 average. It's not the heights we're used to seeing from Michael Smith on the European Tour and he just hasn't done it this year on the European Tour compared to other years and he's got to click at one stage on the European Tour this year will it be against Stephen Bunting tomorrow? Now Stephen Bunting beat Jermaine Watermina by 6 legs to 2 with an 89.81 average we generally see a lot higher average than that from Stephen Bunt we generally see between a 95 and a 100 average and his average on the night he'll be disappointed with his performance but to get the one will override all those disappointments in his performance and he'll know that playing Michael Smith's another day. What do I think is going to happen in this match? I think this will be a very, very close match. Both players know each other too well and I think that could cause a lower of the standard in this match. I think both players might struggle in this match but I think that Stephen Bunty will edge this match by six legs to five over Michael Smith. The next match sees number four seed Kim Hybrids take on the number 13 seed Alan Norris. Now Kim's been in some decent form and he beat Martin Schindler by six legs to nil with a 92.02 average. It wasn't Kim's best performance but it was a workmanlike professional performance. That's how I would describe it against Martin Schindler. He got the job done without losing a leg and he'll be hoping to carry on and show his form that he showed in previous weeks on the European Tour against Alan Norris. Now Alan Norris 
reached this stage by beating Nathan Aspel again by six legs to nil with a 94.93 average. That's a decent performance by Alan Norris and we know about Alan's power scoring. He didn't quite produce it, the, the power score we're used to seeing, but he can up it another couple of levels against Kim Hybrids. I think this will be another close match, but I think Kim Hybrids will edge this match over Alan Norris by six legs to five. The next match sees the number two seed, Peter Wright, take on the number 15 seed, Joe Cullen. Now, Peter Wright beat Brendan Doan by six legs to one, with a 94.49 average. Again, he's got to change his darts before this match. He wasn't happy with his darts against Brendan Doan, and he'll change them before the Joe Cullen match. And talking about Joe Cullen, Joe Cullen beat Robbie Green by six legs to, to one, with a 98.35 average. Joe Cullen just has that consistency level on European Tour. Now, over the last year, he's been very, very consistent, and now he's starting to show more consistency, and that's what he really lacked in the past. It's great to see that from Joe Cullen. It was a battle between Manchester United and Liverpool in his previous match with Robbie Green. With Joe Cullen being a Manchester United fan and Robbie Green walking out to You'll Never Walk Alone, it was a great interesting clash between those two. But Joe was just far too strong for Robbie Green. So what do I think is going to happen in this match? I think that Peter Wright will average 100 and just be a little bit too strong for Joe Cullen. And I think Peter Wright will win this match by six legs to three over Joe Cullen. The next match sees the number seven seed, James Wade, take on the unseeded Johnny Clayton. Now, James Wade beat Mark Frost by six legs to four with an 87.7 average. Again, it was a machine-like performance. It wasn't James Wade anywhere near his best. It's probably like him in second gear, but he done enough to beat Mark Frost and get through. It doesn't matter about his performance as long as he gets a win. That's all James Wade is concerned about. And he takes on Johnny Clayton. Now, Johnny Clayton was outstanding in his match earlier tonight. He beat Yella Classen by six legs to one with 102.33 average. And he was outstanding on doubles. He took six out of his seven doubles chances to win this match. So if Johnny Clayton plays like that, this will be a very, very good match between him and James Wade. And I think we could see an upset in this match if Johnny Clayton can replicate that form. I think Johnny Clayton can win this match by six legs to five over James Wade. The penultimate game of the afternoon session sees the number six seed, Benito Van der Pass, take on the unseeded Joe Murner. The Benito Van der Pass was lucky in his match, winning by six legs to five, with a 98.11 average. Crystal Reyes had plenty of chances, especially in the last leg, to close the match out, but he just couldn't do it. And Benito Van der Pass stepped in and won this match by six legs to five. That was great maturity by Benito Van der Pass to do that in such a tough arena because we all knew that Crystal Reyes had the potential of winning that match and Benito went in that match as his favourite and he dealt with the favourite tag really really well in that match beating Crystal Reyes. Moving on to Joe Murner, now Joe Murner also edged out a 11 leg shootout against Terry Jenkins by 6 legs to 5 with a 93.29 average. Again, a decent performance by Joe Murner, and that's what we expect from Joe Murner on the European Tour. Backing up his first round performance against Terry Jenkins, it was another good performance by Joe Murner. So if these two players play at their potential, again, that's going to be a very, very good match. And I think Benito van der Pass will win this match by six legs to four. The last match of the afternoon sees two unseeded players, but this should be an absolute cracking match because they are top quality players. James Wilson takes on Rayan van Barneveld. Now, James Wilson beat Ian White by six legs to three with a 99.32 average. It was all about legs of three. He won the first three legs this match and had a lull in the match and he lost the next three, but then he bounced back and won the next three, winning the match by six legs to three. And he takes on Rian van Barneveld. Now he beat Simon Whitlock by six legs to five with a 93.5 average. It was a decent performance by Rian van Barneveld and he knows what he has to do in this competition to qualify for the European Championships. He knows he has to reach the final to reach uh, Belgium and the European Championships. 
So he's solely focused on that. So what do I think is going to happen in this match? Again, I think we'll have a very, very close match. But I think we could see a shock in this match. I think that James Wilson could shock Ryan Van Barneveld in this match by six legs to five. Again, I think it was a very, very tight match. And choosing between these two players was quite difficult for me. But I'm going for James Wilson to beat Ryan Van Barneveld by six legs to five. So with that, that's the end of this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up on the video. If you want to leave any feedback in this video, you can do so either by the comment section below or by my Twitter, which will also be in the description below. And until tomorrow when I preview another video, I will a slightly different video than you're used to seeing, but you'll enjoy it hopefully. Until then, I'll see you then. Goodbye.